Hi, it's Iowa Prairie Girl. It is a beautiful August evening and I am not in a prairie. That's right, if you look behind me, I'm down by the drainage ditch. So tonight we're going to take a look at blue vervain. Blue vervain is a plant that's just going crazy here in North Iowa. It likes to bloom or it blooms in um, midsummer to late summer and it likes wet areas. It will grow in a prairie, especially if there's some moisture there, but it likes river bottoms, ditches, uh, marshes, um, other wetlands. And so we're going to take a look here at Blue Vervain. So stay tuned. gets to be about five feet tall. The plant in front of me here is a little smaller plant, but on average it's a large, it's a tall plant that's a real erect. And you'll see it in the ditches or in the wet places. And it actually is rather unnoticeable until all of a sudden late summer comes and bloom! It just starts to bloom and you have these bright purple flowers um, and people take notice and say, what is that plant out in that wet area? So you can see that it's, it, it's a, an erect plant that has these mini branches that come off these spikes. And off these spikes you have multiple crowded uh, little purple flowers and those flowers have five petals on them. As I, um, I'll mention that they don't have any fragrance, um, but they're very brilliant when you see them all of a sudden. Um, after the bloom, they develop little uh, nutlets or a little seed and they're, those are called nutlets and there's four nutlets for each flower so you can tell that there, there's a lot of seeds for these plants and um, cardinals, juncos, and sparrows like to eat um, the seeds off of the blue verveins. Now if I mention the, the square stem and um, from that square stem you have opposite leaves, meaning that they grow opposite of each other on the stem. Um, you'll see that it has a stalk um, off of the leaf. Not all, not all um, flower or leaves come, uh, have a stalk. Sometimes they come right off the stem without a stalk, but on the blue vervain you'll have the stalk. And then the leaves get to be about six inches long. Um, they're real serrated um, and they have a deep vein running through them. So that's, this is called a lancelet leaf, meaning that it's oblong with a, with a pointy tip and it looks like a lance. Okay. Now there is another plant that um, is very similar to blue vervain that's very easy to get mixed up and that's called hoary vervain. Now the difference between blue vervain and hoary vervain are several, um, although it, it, is hard, it, it is hard to distinguish the two of them. So blue vervain has this very small flower. So the flower on the blue vervain is only about a quarter of an inch, a really small flower. On a hoary vervain, the flower is about a half an inch, so it's much larger. On the blue vervain, as I mentioned, I showed you the leaves, they're stalked. Um, on the hoary vervain, um, they, are, they don't have that stalk and they are much smaller. They're only about two to three inches long. Uh, blue verveins love to grow in moist areas and the hoary vervain um, grows more in a drier area and grows in clumps. Uh, the other main thing, hoary means hairy, um, and so the leaf on the blue ver or on the hoary vervain has a fine white hairs on it, which makes it that hairy appearance. So that's the difference between a blue vervain and a hoary vervain. Blue vervain doesn't have any fragrance. Uh, however, it does have a very bitter taste, and it's said that in the Roman times they would carry blue vervain with them to peace negotiations, and they would uh, share a cup of tea made from blue vervain, and the blue vervain, if you came as enemies, once you left, drank that tea, you would leave as friends. Now, to take it a step further, uh, witches and magicians uh, back in the Middle Ages used blue vervain as an aphrodisiac. Lots of different uses in the Middle Ages for blue vervain. Um, another name for vervain is verbena, and verbena means altar plant, and it was used uh, in the altars of the ancient Egyptians um, and also the Greeks, and they would sprinkle their altars with water that had vervain in it. They would also cut um, a twig of the twigs of the vervain, and almost you can see where it could almost be made used as a broom to sweep off the altars. Um, in the Celtics, uh, verbain means to drive away stones and uh, it was used to drive away um, or used to get rid of kidney stones. Um, lots of good luck with blue vervain. If you have it with you, it's supposed to give you good luck. 
And if you keep it in your house, it's supposed to keep your house from being struck by lightning. Um, multiple, multiple uses for blue vervain um, in the Middle Ages. Um, let me see. There's so many I had to write them down. So it's used as a relaxant, um, and they used it to um, prevent seizures. Uh, used it for fever and a, as a diuretic. It's an astringent, as I mentioned, so it's used in wound care. It has anti antibacterial properties, so it's been used to treat urinary tract infections and upper respiratory infections. And then also used as a good oral rinse um, for people that have bleeding of their gums or sore throats. Now the one name that I like um, is also called mosquito plant, and that's because you can make a compress or a lotion from blue vervain and that will help with insect bites. Let me double check to make sure I said everything because there were so many. Um, did I mention it's called holy herb uh, or herb of the cross because it was used to, or it's so, so said to be used to um, clean Christ's wounds. So as you can see, lots of uses um, for blue vervain. One last thing about blue vervain that I find really cool is that I've mentioned how the flowers grow on those stalks. The flowers start at the bottom up. So they start blooming on the bottom and they work their way up. And when you see a cluster of the blue vervain uh, spikes, um, they never seem to be in the same stage. So some will be blooming towards the bottom and some are blooming up um, towards the top of the tips of the spikes. And I find that, I find that kind of cool. All right, so it's been a fun evening. You can see behind me the sun is setting. Um, this is Iowa Prairie Girl. Please uh, like my uh, YouTube channel. Please share it and subscribe. Um, but really, truly, just get out there and enjoy the, those wild places. I um, encourage you to get out and, and smell the wildflowers and see the wonderful. This is Iowa Prairie Girl.